Warning, the following episode contains discussions about violent crimes, disturbing events, and explicit details that may be unsettling for some listeners. Please be advised that this podcast is not suitable for young children, and listener discretion is strongly advised. Welcome to Southern Shadows, a mother-son true crime podcast. I'm one of your hosts, DK. And I'm Mama, and each week we're here to bring you a true crime story that has left a mark on the South. Today's story actually takes us across the South, if you will. So growing up, I vividly remember taking a lot of road trips as a family. I don't know, Papa just really loved to drive, I guess, but it would often take us to all of these beautiful new places, all of these scenic routes, but at night, you know, it would be kind of sketchy. And I have this vivid memory of one night, my dad pulled over to help some people. And Mm -hmm. all I know is next thing, they were in the car riding with us, some strangers. Did you know hitchhiking wasn't really like a big deal back in the day? Like it was just normal? Yeah, it was normal. Like people weren't afraid to ask for rides from strangers, nor were they afraid to pick up strangers, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we had a Bronco at the time and... I don't know. I haven't really seen a Bronco since I was seven, but the back had like a huge trunk space where three little kids, it was really easy to pile in the back. So that's what me, your aunt, your uncle, we piled into the back of the car. And I actually remember that one of the guys had to ride in the back with us. And I don't remember him being like sinister or anything like that. I mean, he was very much giving hippie vibes. He had like long hair. He had a guitar. Don't come for me, guys. I'm not saying that everybody with long hair and a guitar is a hippie. But I just remember that, you know, he was cool. Yeah. We dropped him off in the next town and we kind of went about our business. But fast forward to today. I wouldn't do it. If I saw people stranded on the side of the road, like trying to wave me down at nighttime, I know it sounds horrible, but I would probably keep driving. Yeah, it's a crazy world today. So you never know. Exactly. But I think I would at least maybe call the cops or something. Just be like, hey, saw these people on the side of the road look like they need some help. Right. Right. But I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to us right now that are like my dad and wouldn't think twice about stopping to help a stranger in need. People like Adam Simji and Michaela Paulus, two University of Central Florida students who were driving near the Talladega National Forest outside of Birmingham on August 14th. 2022. As they were driving, they were flagged down by a woman who was seemingly having some car trouble. The couple helped her and after about 30 minutes, she pulled a gun on them. She demanded their keys, their cell phones, their money, and forced them to walk further into the woods. What she wasn't prepared for though, was Adam also had a gun. At some point, she and Adam exchanged gunfire She was shot several times in the torso, but not before Adam was shot fatally in the back. Once the gunfire stopped, Michaela was actually able to get her cell phone back and called 911 while trying to keep Adam alive. Unfortunately though, it took the police 30 minutes to get to them and Adam had already passed away. The woman survived and she was rushed to the hospital where she went into surgery. What police uncover leads to a bizarre connection to the University of Cosmic Intelligence. Before we get into today's case, I have to say that just because D and I don't follow the same practices or beliefs or fully understand, does not mean that we don't value other people's beliefs. We are not here to be disrespectful or judgmental. We're just here to state the facts as they've been presented to us. Right, so let's get into it. Today's case takes us through several stories that have been seemingly linked back to a group of individuals following the teachings of the University of Cosmic Intelligence. Before we jump into that, let's go back to the shooter, Yasmin Haider, 
the woman who was, quote, stranded with car troubles in the middle of the forest. She was described as a hard-working college student from Oklahoma. Vice News reported that as early as 2020, Hyder was just moving into her dorm at Langston University, an HBCU in Oklahoma. Reps from the university would later confirm that she was in fact enrolled in the fall 2020, spring 2021 semester, but no longer attends the university. On the night of the shooting, when Michaela was able to make the call to 911, she reported that there was another woman who seemed to be waiting in the woods, but ran after shots were fired. That woman was Crystal Pinkins. Crystal was a qualified home health aide and at 36 years old, had worked for Baptist Memorial Health in Tennessee for nine years. On her LinkedIn profile, she also said that she was a freelance writer and wanted to become a motivational speaker. According to Vice News, police got word of a possible group of people living together in the National Forest. When police found Pinkins, she was living in an armed group of tents that had been set up as sort of a base camp. Reportedly, a five-year-old child ran out of the woods with a loaded shotgun when the police were trying to tell Crystal to get on the ground. The police told the child to put down the shotgun, but he kept walking until he reached Crystal's side, assuming it was her son. If you look more closely at the accounts that both of the women followed, it seemed like they were starting to take an interest in very specific beliefs about Black sovereignty and freedom from mainstream ways of thinking and social control. These ideas were like a mix of new age, spiritual empowerment, and different conspiracy theories. Hyder even changed her Instagram name to Cosmic Queen. She was especially critical and scrutinized people who got the COVID vaccine and posted videos about the flat earth theory. There's also a woman who tagged her in group photos who calls herself a quote, sovereign queen or sovereign empress. This woman has written a number of posts about astral travel. Wait, what, what are you saying? Listen, I don't know. I actually had to do so many Google searches about all of this, but just wait, we're going to get there. Building up to her off grid lifestyle, Hyder was making TikTok videos where she would say, quote, it's coming or it's getting close. I am lost myself and I need a tribe of people to gather information and figure it out together because that's the true way of life and getting back to how we originally were. One ideology that both women had become strong followers of was called the University of Cosmic Intelligence, or UCI, which is led by Rashad Jamal White, but goes by Rashad Jamal. He's a content creator with over 300,000 followers across multiple platforms. In his bio, he describes himself as an author, poet, revolutionary, and luminous being, but has even called himself the Messiah and a God. His target audience is Black and Latino people whom he refers to as, quote, carbonated beings. I'm going to come back to him in just a second. Hyder would often repost things that Jamal would put out, such as a warning that, quote, they were about to attack people's houses with synthetic robots in order to force COVID vaccinations. There seems to be strong connections to the Anunnaki, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, which were ancient Sumerian deities that are often referred to as a race of black alien beings responsible for things like building the pyramids. More recently, it's become popular on TikTok as the race that engineered humanity. What does that mean? I think it means that they believe that the world began because of these black alien beings who came down and created humans in their likeness. I guess similar to how Christians believe that we were created in God's likeness. Right. At some point, Hyder and Pinkins started traveling together and it's unclear how they actually ended up in the woods of Alabama. After Hyder's surgery, she was formally charged with murder and kidnapping. Pinkins was charged with one count of endangering the welfare of a child, one count of murder, two counts of kidnapping in the first degree, and two counts of robbery in the first degree. Did they ever tell the police or anybody why they did it? From what I gather, there really wasn't a real motive other than to just steal their car and probably money. Because remember, they're supposed to be living off grid. I'm not really sure if they meant to kill Adam though. 
Another crime that has alleged connections to UCI happened in January of 2022, where a 23-year-old Alabama man named Damian Washam was charged with murder, attempted murder, attempt to elude, and other crimes, after he allegedly killed his mother with a sword. He also injured his uncle, who has cerebral palsy, and his brother. After a police chase that ended with Damien being tased for trying to run, the NewYorkPost.com reported that his father said Damien used to be a normal young man who liked to play a lot of video games. He alleges that Damien got caught up in Jamal's videos and started to become obsessed with getting energy from the sun. Washam said that Damien was, quote, listening to those conspiracy kind of videos. His father also claimed that Damien started to do things that were uncharacteristic, like sell his PlayStation. He became obsessed with Egyptian gods and the underworld and started buying weapons. He also purchased thousands of dollars worth of crystals from the UCI's merch store. The sword that was used to kill his mother and injure his uncle and brother was found in the front seat of his car when he was arrested. I told you this was gonna be a lot and there are several other arrests of people with connections to UCI that I definitely wanna talk about. In June, 2022, for example, a man who goes by Smooth was arrested in Morgan County, Georgia on a family violence charge. According to an affidavit, he allegedly punched his victim in the chest and engaged in a physical struggle with the victim for control of a gun. He pleaded not guilty and a trial was set for late November. His last video that he posted before his arrest was him arriving at a campground and he says, quote, we made it to the spot. This is all coming back to us. Shout out to all the Cherokee Indians. That's all of us. We're all Cherokee. We're the Indians. We're the gods. We're everything. In July 2022, another follower of UCI named Prophet was taken into custody in Indiana on charges of, quote, dealing in marijuana weighing between 30 grams and 10 pounds, possession of marijuana and of a controlled substance. By the time of his first court date in August, court records show that he was already in jail in Van Buren County, Michigan, charged with driving while intoxicated and three felony counts of assaulting, resisting, or obstructing a police officer, according to vice.com. In August, 2022, his wife set up a GoFundMe so that they could pay his bond, which they claimed was set at $100,000. The page wrote, quote, someone was desperate to stop him and Rashad Jamal and that it was an attempt to stop the rise of the next black messiah. And he refuses to be another victim of this wicked, evil, disgusting system. As of today, the page has only raised $10. It doesn't stop there though. In September, 2022, a young group of black people in Georgia were protesting loudly that a cop was harassing them. The person filming the incident can be heard saying, quote, it's eight o'clock in the rising. We're being harassed by a racist cop. You can also hear someone say, quote, we're sovereign beings. The documented police report is that an officer ran the plates of a car in which he observed the occupants to be behaving in a strange manner and discovered the car was uninsured. The driver, Lee, known online as Free Soul the God or Free Soul, was arrested when he refused to provide identification or his name and date of birth. He even got out of the car when he was instructed not to. The officer also confiscated a number of machetes from the car and Lee, along with someone else, were arrested. Lee was charged with driving with a suspended license and without insurance. All right, so who's Rashad Jamal and why are these incidents being tied to him? Well, originally from Chicago, he moved to Atlanta to pursue a rap career in 2017. In 2020, he released a single called God Talk and gained over 300,000 views. He eventually shifted his focus to teaching spiritual practices instead. He often compares himself to Jesus Christ, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King Jr. 
Essentially, Rashad Jamal is a new age prophet whose following seems to be esoteric black communities. Do you know what that means? Nah. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't either, but according to Merriam-Webster, it means that it's designed for or understood by a small group, limited to a small circle or difficult to understand. Like I mentioned before, Jamal has a strong presence online that includes over 200,000 followers on YouTube, over 93,000 followers on Instagram, 10,000 on Twitter, and 176,000 on TikTok. He is the leader of the University of Cosmic Intelligence that is, quote, geared towards enlightening and illuminating the minds of the carbonated beings, aka your so-called Black and Latino people of Earth according to their website. He has claimed to be a semi-divine being that was brought back to Earth, or the planet Kai, to heal the planet. He believes that only Black and Latino people are gods and goddesses. He accuses NBA players of being synthetic robots. He says that the government modifies the weather, and he repeats a variety of anti-vaccine talking points. He also shares his opinions on multiple topics such as world history, black history, and quantum physics, which, by the way, he holds no degree in either subject. He uses his online platform to sell videos of his lectures as well as crystals and jewelry, sell mass meditations, and promote the streaming of his albums. His followers refer to themselves as the Grand Cosmic Rising Family. He also uses Twitter quite often to promote polygamy. Do you know what that is? Mm -mm. It's illegal in a lot of states, but because he and his followers claim themselves as sovereign citizens, they don't follow the laws. But essentially, polygamy is having more than one wife. What's a sovereign citizen? Again, this is something that's very new to me, but essentially it's a small group of people who believe in personal autonomy and they reject some parts of government power. They typically believe that because they are sovereign citizens, they don't have to follow the rules, laws, or the authority of the government. Sovereign citizens often have strange ideas about how the law and the constitution should be interpreted. For example, they say that they don't have to pay taxes or get a driver's license, even though the law says you definitely do. So I was actually doing research for another case when an ad came across that talked about a Mississippi woman who hasn't seen or heard from her daughter in a few months and believed that she joined a cult. So naturally, I clicked on that story and it led me down this very intricate rabbit hole. So let's talk about the missing people that are linked to UCI. As of earlier this month, January 2024, six people, including two young children, have been reported missing in the St. Louis area. According to NBC News, the missing people are believed to have ties to Rashad Jamal and have gone completely off the grid. They've been identified as Jeriel German, 26, and her three-year-old son, Ashton Mitchell, from Mississippi, Naaman Williams, 29, Michaela Thompson, 23, Michaela Wickerson, 25, and her three-year-old daughter, Malaya. According to WREG Memphis, German's mother, Shalita Gibson, has been frantic because she says that her daughter, Jeriel, took her son and abruptly moved to St. Louis in July, 2023, leaving behind her four-year-old daughter. Her mother says that Jeriel told her that she was on a spiritual journey and that she was doing things like meditating on a blanket outside and quoting Jamal. Her mother said she was saying things about high frequency, low frequency, and cosmic husbands, and she was kind of acting a little weird, but I really didn't pay attention to it at the time. She is thought to have been dropped off by a friend at a residence in Berkeley, Missouri, where the other missing people were also living. Michaela Wickerson's mom, Katisha Morgan, also did an interview for KSDK of St. Louis and stated that she hadn't had contact with her daughter in over six months. In March 2023, she had withdrawn from her family and moved into a house with people that her mom didn't recognize. When she went to check on her granddaughter, Michaela told her that these people were now her family and asked her mom not to come by anymore. Of course, as mothers do, she continued to drive by to make sure that things were, quote, all right. 
She actually asked authorities to conduct wellness checks a few times, but each time, Michaela answered all their questions and everything seemed to be normal. In a report by USA Today, Naaman Williams had one last conversation with his mother, Lakita Williams, and told her that she was not his mother, but a, quote, shell that brought him into the universe. He secretly moved to St. Louis after he allegedly met Michaela Thompson on the internet, who drove from her home in St. Louis to Washington, D.C. to pick him up. Michaela Thompson's family also told USA Today that they were shocked that she left and she has a daughter that now has to be raised by her great aunt. Berkeley police major Steve Runge told NBC News that they found out that the group went completely off grid. They've turned off their phones, they don't log into their social media accounts, and they even tried sending them money through Cash App, but none of them have accepted it. Some neighbors have reported seeing them outside, worshiping the sun and running around in the yard naked when it's raining. Major Runge told several media outlets that the adults are believed to be part of a cult tied to Rashad Jamal. I don't mean any disrespect, but how do people get so deeply involved in something like this? Honestly, I don't know. And they all probably have their own reasons, but I've watched a couple documentaries and series on major networks about, you know, cults. And one thing that I've noticed is that the leaders tend to prey on people who are searching for a sense of belonging. They are just looking for a social group to be connected to. And, you know, once you begin thinking a certain thing and then you find a group of people who think the same thing you do, then it's easy to really want to connect with those people. So what what has he been doing while all his followers are getting in trouble? Well, that's the real plot twist. And honestly, I was shocked to find this out. But he's been in custody since May 2022. Wait, so he's been in police custody since 2022. Has he still been releasing videos or was he releasing videos during this time? Yeah, I'm going to get to that. But yes, he has been in police custody since 2022. And when he was arrested, he was held without bond because the judge felt that he was a flight risk and he posed a danger to the people of the community, which really upset his followers. According to STL Today, Prosecutors also noted that Jamal had previous convictions out of Wisconsin for domestic battery, as well as disorderly conduct and strangulation and suffocation in a domestic abuse case in 2018. He was convicted in August 2023 of child molestation. His ex-partner, Darshell Smith, alleges that her older child told her about the abuse and she immediately reported it to the police. The couple also have a son together. According to Vice.com, Rashad Jamal and Darshell Smith were together for three years. She says that her relationship was abusive and controlling, claiming that Jamal screamed at her and put a gun to her head. Smith helped Jamal set up his YouTube account for the University of Cosmic Intelligence and was with him when he went from being a rapper to a new age artist. Despite accusations of being jealous, she says that she's only interested in getting justice for her family and being the voice for her child. After Smith filed the report against Jamal, his arrest sparked outrage among his fans, and they started harassing and threatening her. They hold to the fact that all of this is a conspiracy orchestrated to suppress his spiritual influence and reach. Many have even said that he was arrested, quote, without a trace, by, quote, undisclosed and powerful forces. His Twitter account even tweeted that the Hawaii fires and Los Angeles flooding that happened last year were a result of his convictions. So to answer your question, somebody, probably his now current wife, is still running all of his accounts and tweeting on his behalf and posting on his behalf. In the end, Rashad was found guilty of one count of child molestation and one count of cruelty to children in the first degree. He has been sentenced to 18 years plus 22 years probation, 
He's currently being held in Barrow County, Georgia. His wife has been posting and urging followers to sign a petition pleading for justice for Jamal. The petition has over 10,000 signatures. Jamal is asking for his followers to send letters on behalf of his release. His website also urges followers to send money, buy his crystals online, and to stream his album. Jamal has since given a couple of interviews, and when he was asked about the missing people, he says that he doesn't know them. He's also denied being a cult leader. And that's the very complex story of the University of Cosmic Intelligence and their leader, Rashad Jamal. Do you have any thoughts? I have a lot of thoughts. This is definitely unfortunate. But at the end of the day, I hope those people are safe. And I hope they have found what they were looking for. And also, I hope that they can reconnect with their family members or the people that care about them to let them know that they are safe. And But this is just the life that they've chosen to live. Mm -hmm. And hopefully their family members can accept that. Right, right. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. Please make sure that you leave a comment down below and check back with us next week for a brand new episode. If you want to know more about today's episode, please visit us at southernshadowspodcast.com for the full show source notes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. See you in the shadows.